The legs look very silky. Actually pretty shiny, covered in so many fine hairs or seedy. And then one of the characteristic things about this species makes them fairly easy to identify are those silvery attachment points at the base of the legs there up to the cephalothorax. Such a pretty species. And so great for handling too. I have some older videos. I'll pop in here of us handling them. Pretty good sized pedipalps there. Kukulcania hibernalis, like this one, occurs in Florida and makes its way all the way across to Arizona and maybe California, not really sure. There are a few different species in the genus in the US. There's one in California, sometimes makes its way into the hobby. Another one in Arizona makes it into the hobby almost as frequently as these hibernalis. And bye-bye, back into the burrow here. And then the males of Kukulcania, they really look like completely different spiders. And I don't think I've ever actually seen, where did you go? They're very leggy and quick. I don't think I've ever actually seen a male feed. I've tried many times to get them to feed. They have those enormous pedipalps up front, and some fairly bristly looking legs, as you can see there. There's a pretty good shot of the pedipalps up front and those bristly legs. Really, really beautiful spiders. And uh, I suppose it's happened, but I don't know anybody that's ever been bitten by a Kukulcania. Get a shot here of those little attachment points where the legs meet the body. In the female, they were very silvery, but in the male here, paler, but definitely not silvery. The legs are more bristly than covered uniformly in fine hairs. Very leggy specimens. Of course, you can see the remains of some millipedes in here. I've used this tank over and over again for many things over the years. There was actually just one solitary Venones harvestman in here a moment ago, and I removed it so that I could film in this tank. One of the most gentle species, and Definitely one of my top recommendations for a pet spider. We never advise that anybody handles them, but we've never worried about handling this species. One other thing worth mentioning here, you can see just behind the eyes, that darker sort of triangular pattern there. This species is very often confused, these adult males in particular, I should say with brown recluses because they look somewhat similar right down to that darkened spot there on the carapace or uh, the cephalothorax which is distinctly not violin shaped here in this individual and uh, really these are just such 
legier spiders than the recluses. Here's a nice container for a black hole spider. I think Jessica has had this Kukulcania. It's temporarily residing here. Her PDX Insectarium or Portland Insectarium business. She's got a lot of her, her pets here at the moment while she's moving. And this black hole spider, I think she said she's had this one for, I don't know, like six years. And uh, just a wonderful, very long-lived species. Let's see if we can get a better shot of it here. These are pretty nice enclosures. She had them made by Tap Plastics, custom built. Got the hinged lid there. And you can see the randomness of the web of the spider here. Pretty much anything flying or crawling goes into this cage and regardless of where it goes, the spider will be able to detect it and make its way over rather quickly. This is a black hole spider. It's the bug that I wanted to spend a few moments with today in honor of the passing of a great scientist, Stephen Hawking. My copy of A Brief History of Time, from the Big Bang to Black Holes. A black hole spider, Cucalcania hibernalis.